Well, uh, on September 11th, 2001, I was um, backstage getting ready to do the show, and um, I had my daughter with me. Uh, she was three months old. It was our oldest son's first day of nursery school, so my husband was taking him to school. And the news was on in the makeup and hair room, like it, like it always is. And, and suddenly, they cut to this image of the World Trade Center, and it had a hole in it, and there were flames and fire. And they said, it appears that a, a plane has hit the World Trade Center. And so your mind just goes to pilot error, some sort of, some sort of malfunction of equipment. And, and I don't think I realized it was such a large plane. I thought it was probably a small, you know, small single engine, one pilot flying around and hit the building. I did not realize. Nobody could have really realized because your mind wasn't thinking that way. Um, and it was interesting because Regis came downstairs um, and I thought for sure we would be preempted everywhere because I knew that we were certainly preempted in New York and, and uh, our executive producer said, no, you know, we're just preempted here, but we're, we're going on with the show. And Regis said, can you believe what those monsters did? And I, I didn't really know, I didn't know what he meant. I didn't know what he was talking about because I was still thinking to myself that, but he somehow knew that it was sinister and I didn't. I really didn't think that there was anything sinister. I just thought it was tra tragic and awful and horrific. And you felt for those people that we would, once we came out on the air and started our show, um, we immediately told the audience, um, this is what's happening here in New York. And we showed them a live picture um, of what um, our news station was carrying. And um, I don't think I was prepared. The situation had gotten much worse by the time they, those helicopters had gotten downtown and they were showing these images of people trapped and waving frantically out of buildings. And then one by one, you could see clearly people jumping, and you think, you know, this is the worst, this is the worst day ever that I've ever witnessed in my life. This is the most horrific. And that's when all of a sudden we saw another explosion. We, just from the angle of our camera that we were looking at in the studio floor, we saw another explosion. But Nobody really knew what it was, and I, I believe it was Julian, our stage manager, who said, it's the fuselage. Somebody had told him in his ear that it was the fuselage of the plane that blew up, but it didn't seem to, it seemed like it came from somewhere else. Um, that's when we realized that there was a second plane, and that's when sort of everything went, really, everything just became, white chaos, you know, just like you could, just, it was like lightning everywhere. And we went, we went backstage, stunned, the audience was stunned, everybody was stunned. And I remember going into the dressing room, our guest, our first guest for the day was Joan Rivers, and she was sobbing. She was just sobbing. And we just stood around and, and watched all of this um, chaos unfolding before our eyes. And I remember my, my husband had taken our son to his first day of nursery school, and he walked to the studio to, to show me the pictures that he had taken. And that was the first time he saw the images when he, when he walked through the door, and I was standing there with the baby. And I remember all of us just being spellbound and horrified by what we were seeing, yet wanting to wanting to get out of the newsroom because we were in a news building and you think if this is what what it is what it appears to be if this is it what's next the news what, what's next so you wanted to leave but you didn't want to be outside but you didn't want to be inside and then then there were rumors flying everywhere people were talking about they're they're going to bomb Central Park and they're going to blow up this and you would hear these things on the streets and 
I remember coming home. I didn't know. I was sort of desperate. I went. We went and got our son from nursery school, and and who had he had been there all of ten minutes, and I had our our daughter who was three months old, and we we walked home, but didn't want to go into our building because it was a high rise, and but we didn't want to be outside because we had heard that they were going to bomb everything and everywhere and we didn't know who they were we didn't know what it was but it was something really bad and we started listening to the news and planes were missing everywhere and a plane had hit the pentagon and i just thought what what and in my mind i still thought there must be something wrong with the, the airport must there must be some sort of technological glitch there must be a computer problem that is causing this cuz the thought that human beings could do this to other human beings was beyond my comprehension and then we we walked up we walked up um to the top of our building on the roof and we looked downtown and that's when we saw everything start to um fall down we saw we saw the first building fall it was it was such a bad day, really bad day. It's like the worst day. Well, I remember thinking that suddenly the job had taken a, tr a turn. There was a turn, so we were no longer supposed to be entertaining anybody. Suddenly, we were. It was getting informational. We were there to deliver n breaking news until the news people of the local areas of the viewers at home could take over is sort of what we were doing. And it was funny, I just kept repeating myself. I, I remember repeating myself because I wanted to, I really wanted to cry and scream. Because now when you go back and they show images, they've really sort of, um, they've cleaned up what, what you see on the news and the rebroadcast because people were so deeply traumatized and horrified and children were terrified and um but I remember those live images and I'll never forget them. I'll I mean it's just it's it's in my mind forever. Um it it was horrific. And so I just sort of went on autopilot and just started um, speaking about what we were seeing, what we were witnessing, what it appears to be, what early reports are saying it might be, and then, um, and then eventually, in all of the markets, the news had taken over and we walked off the set. And I don't even think we, I don't think we said goodbye to each other. We just sort of walked in different directions, and everybody walked in walked it was like um it was as if it was a, a a studio of zombies and people were behaving as if they were zombies a city of zombies and everybody was and it was like that all day and, and um and it didn't it really it never ended it really stayed that way um and the ominous feeling when they closed the bridges and the tunnels and you just realize we are trapped here in a place where nobody knows what's happening, planes are missing, planes are crashing into buildings, and somebody wants bad things for us here, certainly. We are, we're seeing it, and people want bad things to happen to us here. Coming back into the, coming back to work a week later was, it was, it was spellbinding to me because our audience was very small. It was very intimate. People were not returning to the city at all. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of our audience um, was people that worked in the building. Um, some were just tourists from out of town that had been trapped here that couldn't get out. Um, and I remember watching um, Katie Couric and Diane Sawyer and a, and a bunch of the female newscasters and they had been on the air for a week straight and I watched them and I thought I'm emotionally drained I'm spent I'm exhausted I'm horrified I'm terrified I'm scared to death to be here yet they've been 
holding all of this down. They've been breaking this news and analyzing this news and been on the air for 24 hours, 48 hours. You would, you would see them all just, it was remarkable to watch. So I sort of said to myself, get yourself together and go out on the air and try to convey to people that it's okay to feel frightened, it's okay to feel depressed and sad, but it's also okay to feel like you're an American, you're proud of your country, that we have all pulled together and sort of bonded together in this grim hour of need. And that's kind of what we set out to do, it's what we came out to do. But those, that early, you know, that September 11th and then the following week when we came back to, to work, when I see the show, it's like watching another person. It's not even familiar to me because I was so um, having an out-of-body experience or so, still so traumatized by all of it that I didn't really, um, I did, I, 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 it's, like, it's like snapshots. And again, it's, you know, it was Regis that really got us through both of those days because he is a pro, but I remember listening, he read, he read um, I think he read a poem or a note that somebody had written on the air, and his voice was um, trembling with rage. And I actually think that scared me more, you know? It was just, uh, you know. But you realize at the end of the day, we were, we were the fortunate ones, really. And, and uh, so we had, I felt like I had no right to feel that way, I had to pick up and move along and, and, and try to show people that you can, you can move forward as hard as it is. Well, I mean, that is, I mean, that is true. It was, it was, it was my, it was what was in my heart. You know, it's every day you're, you're happy to see your friends, you're happy to see everybody, but I was really just so great, grateful, happy to see everybody um, in a way that, you know, you never thought about before. You never thought that a uh, horror like that could befall a place like this, a country like this. Um, and, and, and young families were torn apart. And so I, I was just really so happy and grateful to see everyone.